thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. I am super excited. My guest Janet Sandberg is here, and I'm excited because I was just on her show recently, and I'll actually put that in the show notes as well so that you can check that one out. So I was on her show recently, and she decided to come on my show. So here we are. I have Janet Sandberg, and I'm super excited that she's here. Janet, take it away and tell the people a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. All right. I'm excited to be here. We had such a good talk last time. We did. Um, so yeah, talking more today about all sorts of things and different things. Um, who am I? I, I'm a lot of things. Um, uh, personally, I am a wife, newly married still, uh, again, <laughs> two and a half years this time to the right man. Yes. Um, together we have five kids who are all grown. Um, I love family and friends and concerts and movies and uh dinosaurs and dancing wait 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 dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> i love dinosaurs um yeah and and i've danced my whole life and i'm i'm in a, a bit of a a break but i'll get back to it as soon as my life calms down after this move and and getting my my new life sorted and organized and Professionally, I am a master intuitive, a divine channel, Reiki master healer, uh, intuitive coach, author, podcast host. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm here to change people's lives and change the world. And as cheesy as that sounds, that's, <laughs> that's just how it is. I love that. Um, we are so synchronistic mm -hmm. <laughs> because we do pretty much most of the same things, you know, and I laugh because when I talk to people and I, I hear what they do, I'm like, man, we can do similar things, you know, and, and the funny thing about it is people will hear that and be like, oh, well, but why she have her on her show if they do the same thing? And I'm like, because many people are in the planet and everybody is not attracted to the same people. Even exactly. though we do the same things, we attract different people and we do it in different ways. So mm -hmm. that is, I love that. It, it fills me up because, you know, one of the things I want to know and probably everybody else is, how did you get here? Because here's the thing. Most of us are born as divine channels and we're born as intuitives, but most of us don't know it. You That's know, so true. what was that, that, what did that look like for you? Um, it's It's been around my whole life. Um, when I was little, I would get these feelings. Um, usually when I was sitting by myself in front of the TV, coloring. So I'd be kind of in that meditative zone. Yes. Just really quiet, minding my own business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and that and when I was just you know calm and clear and that's sort of when this thing would come but I was little and I didn't know what it was so it was just there and I had nobody I could ask like I knew enough to know that it wasn't like a normal thing that happened to other people um <laughs> that part but I was like huh this is a weird thing that happens to me um and then you know, fast forward when I was a teenager, I got into crystals um, and auras and sort of your intro to metaphysics um, as you do. Um, and then, you know, another 15 years later, um, things were with the advent of the internet, you know, more and more people started knowing about energy and and metaphysics and all of these things that I had been interested in my whole life, not knowing why. Um, and I learned about Reiki and, mm. and then I learned Reiki and at my Reiki one class, I was like, Oh my God, 
this is it. This explains my entire life. (laughs) But she said, I'm home. Yeah, this is how I experience the world. And not only that, not only there's an explanation now for how I experience the world, but I can use that to help people. Mm. Um, so yeah, then I just went down the rabbit hole of, you know, learning, learning all the Reiki's and like a dozen different energy healing methods and like yeah. everything that I could. I was just like, I got, I got to learn all that there is to to learn and do all that there is to do, which of course you can't do, but eventually I calmed down, you know, 10 years later. <laughs> I was yes, like, that, I I've learned well. enough now. <laughs> And then, it, and then it was just on like personal practice and developing what I had learned and what I knew. And yeah. Yes. I, I understand am. it. I know it well because I actually was laughing because um, I, I signed up for another class. <laughs> 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 but it was a Black Friday special and it was free oh, on I Udemy. Know. So I thought, there you go. Yeah. And then, and then I found another class girl for like five bucks on Groupon. <laughs> I was like, I can do that. Because <laughs> I think we had talked before about how, you know, we just keep diving and taking classes and more and more and more and more because, you know, we just feel like there's so much more to learn. And then in this, this is to me, as soon as you start un- unpacking stuff, you yeah. start cracking open things. It's like, oh my God, that is so interesting. I I need to know about that. You know, I need to be able to share about that. So what did you do prior to stepping into this world? You know, what what, what was your uh, career life like before this? I, well, I, (laughs) I didn't have one. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So like I, I went to university after university, I lived abroad. I was in a nanny, an au pair. Um, and then I met, that had to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. It was good fun. Uh, I met my ex-husband while I was living abroad. Um, and then we got married and moved, moved abroad. We lived in several different countries. Um, and I taught ESL English as a second language while we were living in non-English speaking countries for a couple of years and then, uh, started having babies And then I stayed home with them for many years. And then I started my own business. So I've never had like a real career job. So the the transition of you um, moving into this world wasn't as difficult because you were just doing different things. You were talking about how you and your your ex-husband moved and went to different countries and Yep. Yeah. And I was, I was at home with kids. So I, I was doing this sort of as a hobby on the side for a long time until the kids got older. And then I just started my own business because you can't work for other people when you do what we do. No, no. You got to go out on your own, whether you want to or not. (laughs) Exactly. Cause, cause what do you say? Oh, well, you know what? (laughs) I'm a crystal healer. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. So what did your family feel about um, you in this this arena? They didn't really know a whole lot about what I do. Um, they they kind of knew the Reiki. That was that was something that they'd heard of and kind of got it um, beyond that. I didn't talk to them. They never asked about my work. I didn't talk to them about my work. So like my, my parents and my, my sister and like that, my, my original family, um, my ex-husband and my kids, like my kids just grew up with it. That's you know? what I was going to ask. What about your kids? Cause I know yeah. sometimes kids can be. Yeah. yeah. Like they don't, I never worked on them without their permission or, you know, I, and, and they were older sort of by the time I got really into it. So I know there are some Reiki practitioners and healers who would like give their kids Reiki every night before bed. Right. Like I was never one of those people. Gotcha. But, and my kids, 
now they're in their 20s they're just like when their friends be like what do your mom what does your mom do they're like mm, uh <laughs> lots of things <laughs> lots of things they don't really know how to like name it right how, you know it's like because how do we name it yeah because so I, like, I was I was talking to my husband about this and it was so funny I have a friend and she's been like four or five different things you know <laughs> Like, you know, and, and it's funny because most of us go through that same thing, you know, because you, you listen to some of the names. Oh, I'm a um spirit guide, you know, or I'm a chakra wellness expert. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> and so you <laughs> you typically, you know, to me, as you grow, then some of the some of those things shift, you know, although yeah, some your, people are your still, titles shift over yes, time. Yes. And so I was actually wondering was that something that you did as you went along, you know, where you won this thing and then oh, you decided, yeah. this is really where I'm at. And then, then you looked up and you went, no, I really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, when I first started, I was doing massage therapy and Reiki. Um, and then I moved um, from Michigan to Canada and then my massage therapy license wasn't valid anymore. Right. So I stopped doing massage because I wasn't about to go back to school to learn the same thing I had just learned. Wait, 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 wait. You had to go back to school? Yeah. They they wouldn't even let you like take the test? Mm -mm. No. Um, Ontario and British Columbia have like really, really tight, bizarre massage therapy rules. Mm -hmm. um, so unless you're trained there yeah. under their system, uh, they won't let you practice. Oh, so that yeah, would have yeah. been like you know, go back to school for another $10,000. No, no. And, and I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, just no. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so like, I didn't like massage therapy that much anyways. So right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a stepping stone towards where I am now and I'm grateful for it. And I learned yes. a lot, yes. but, and it also like, it really helped me like learning anatomy and physiology and pathology. Like when clients would come in with physical hurts for Reiki. Yeah. I knew exactly what they were talking about. I knew where yeah. things were located in the body. Like it was really, really helpful. And yeah. I had a more sort of scientific approach to my Reiki yeah. than a lot of Reiki practitioners had. Yes. I, I, I get that as well. Same thing. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I can understand, you know, a little bit better. Cause like I took like a medical intuitive class. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that also was another thing. It was like, okay, yeah, I, I can understand a little bit. And so I appreciate this other place that I was. Yeah. I appreciate that. I, I can appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's goals. You know, as we go on this journey, especially in this world, you know, to be able to really look back and appreciate where we came from and what, what we went through and what we brought with us into these practices. Yes. I think it's huge so you're a newlywed I am I'm so excited <laughs> for you how does that feel it's amazing we've been well especially since we've been married for two and a half years and only living together for three months so <laughs> that is awesome yeah so it, it's sort of you know re rekindled the romance not that it ever really died but you know, it's, we're, we're kind of starting over again. Oh, that is so, so awesome. I know that yeah. feels expansive. And then especially the fact that, you know, and I'm not knocking kids or anything like that. I have to say that so people don't, you know, mm -hmm. throw me hate, <laughs> but it's such a different time when it's just you together and you don't have to worry about that, yes. you know, little kids and, you know, extra things and stuff, because you can actually come together and just you know be with one another where you don't have all these extra outside things yes you know to me it's a different whole time with you know this husband than it was with the other one where you know we had the kids and it was always something and we were always doing and going and moving and shaking where sometimes you know when it's just you guys you can just go like mm -hmm. we just plan to take this trip because we want to get get away we don't have anything 
you know, it's not, a, you know, not really a purpose, but just to get away. And we can do that because it's just us. Yeah. You know, and well, so- yeah, we were, we were away last week on vacation and, you know, you go out and you're on the beach or, or at a restaurant or whatever, and other people have adorable babies and little kids and, yeah, you know, you look at them and you're like, oh my God, they're so cute. I'm so glad they belong to other people now. <laughs> <laughs> Because then we can just go off and have our nice dinner and not have to worry about anything and not have to rush back to put the kids to bed. And, you know, we can just be. Yes. And it's a long time coming. You know, that is what I said. I was like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. Mm hmm. And, you know, loving our grown children for and it's amazing to watch them at at the ages that they're at in their, you know, early 20s just starting out on their adult lives and watching them grow and thrive and learn and yes and being there for them to give advice when they want it yes and you know and just watching them become yes who who they're going to be and it's yes. it's amazing i love it i tell people i said i with my kids cuz they're like well i told my child this and they're wrong you know and blah blah, blah. i said well listen first thing is they're your child, but they're not your child. You know, they're they're an adult. I said, the second thing is you have to stop telling them. You have to just plant the seed. Mm-hmm. I said, I plant the seed and I said, you know what? I said, I saw this thing and I, you know, I said, and all of a sudden I thought of you. I said, have you looked at um blah, 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 blah. And then I, then I leave it alone. You know, I don't bother it anymore. And then next thing I know, they come back to me and say, Ma, you remember you were telling me about that? Well, I checked that out and I decided. Blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, great. Wonderful. Yeah. And it feels good because I planted this seed. You know, they they decided whether they were going to water it or, you know, they're going to dig it up or what they were going to do. But I planted the seed and my work is done. Mm -hmm. just like regular people you know you can suggest things and they'll do it when they're ready to do it yes they won't absolutely (laughs) absolutely or they won't that part (laughs) so let's talk about your work because I know that it is expansive just being in your energy is expansive for me (laughs) I have to tell you and so I know that you know what's weird is the lighting is a little crazy but the sun is shining here in the pacific northwest and you know that is rare at this time of the year yes it is <laughs> but the sun is shining and I'm, like, I'm in this weird twilight zone moment anyway <laughs> so give an example of somebody that would come to you and how you would help them you know because i because we all know that our ideal client is typically us a few steps back yes yeah. So, you know, once you figure that out, to me, it's like, okay, I can help this person, you know, because mm-hmm. I know where they were and I was them, mm-hmm. you know, so, so describe like a time when you had a person that came to you that you knew exactly where they were and you were able to, you know, get them where they wanted to be. Oh, I think... I mean, there's a lot. So trying, trying to, trying yeah, to just. I was gonna one. say, I figured but, that. But this, this one girl, uh, young woman, who you know, I she found me online somewhere somehow, um, and and started hanging out in my Facebook groups and started showing up for things and and you know I and then it turned into a a more paid working relationship. And at the beginning, I just, I didn't really know anything about her, of course, except she was a young mom and, and she was trying to figure out her gifts. Um, And now she's, you know, she's got her own practice. She's like gone into business with her gifts now that she's figured out what they are. And she's like hosting retreats and she's doing all the, this amazing work. And I'm like, huh, no, like, I didn't really see that coming. (laughs) <laughs> you should have what? wait what you're there too and what you, you didn't see it coming yeah it was just and and I well I didn't know you never know with people sometimes right. they want to develop their gifts just to do that not necessarily mm-hmm. to make a job out of it right 
Um, but yeah, she's just, she's off blossomed and grown and but and, does that make you feel and good doing though, her right? own thing and and doing you know things like we're doing yeah so, but in her own way and it's it's beautiful and that so, makes you feel good right yeah, yeah. it does it does and you know, uh, I love it when you look up and you're like I don't know for me I feel like a proud mama yes yeah you know I'm like oh my god look at her she's just doing so well you know and yeah. I want to talk a little bit about that because of the culture of this this area where we work in. It's like, you know, I, I've seen a lot of uh, coaches and I've talked to a lot of them, <laughs> but I've seen a lot of them. And, and to me, it's almost like, okay, try to figure out how to say this properly. Um, it's almost like, uh, you know how a lot of times therapy um, is not, always designed to help people to move forward mm -hmm. it's like they're designed to just keep them coming back I've seen some of that in this type of in this area too yes and so I wanted so to many, just your thoughts on that so many coaching things that I've seen out there where you know, like I, I want my clients to not need me anymore. Like that's yes. the goal yes. is to have them graduate and move on yes. and be able to listen to their soul themselves without their needing to translate. Yes. yes. You know, that's, that's kind of my job. Like I, I tune into people's souls and I tell them what their soul wants and, and give them that guidance until they're able to do it for themselves. Yes. Until they trust themselves. But like, I think I would be doing a horrible job if people just came to me forever. <laughs> like, but there are some coaches who are like, no, no, you want, you want them to, you know, to always need you because then you'll have, and I'm like, then you'll always, always have money, <laughs> but there's always new people growing and learning and, you know, and, and I don't want to keep my, my clients needing me like I think that would be a terrible place to be I think so too because you're because to me that's that's disempowering and we are wanting to empower exactly you know and that because that's where they would be it's like they're in a disempowered place where they can't can't get their own guidance um I have to say that that was one of the spaces that I was in like last year where I decided I'm not doing no more of these major coaching programs right now I was like, I'm going inside to listen to the guidance that I have, that my higher self has, that, you know, God, universe, source gave me. Yes. And I'm not doing that, <laughs> you know, because I started seeing that stuff. It's like, you know, either, either that or, or as cookie cutter programs, mm -hmm. you know, where it basically it's everything the same. And, you know, if you come and you do this and you follow my my you know four step process then boom you'll be at 10k months <laughs> yeah. and yeah well, and and the whole the whole push towards scaling yes you know, yes you have to scale you have to scale well first of all you have to start somewhere right you, you can't you can't, you can't scale until you, you can't started. scale until you have a sustainable business yes. so how about we start there but also what i do is very intimate yes. and it's very personal. Yes. And I like working one-to-one -one with my clients. Yeah. Sometimes I'll throw a group program out there for certain things or make it more available price-wise for people to have to have a small group. It's still yeah. an intimate group. It's not going to be like a hundred people. Right. I mean, you know, eight. <laughs> but but yeah, there's this whole push towards scaling and large groups and everything again to make more money and it's like yeah if you're in it for the money and there's nothing wrong with money I want to make a million dollars as much as the next we person all want money we all like money but you know I also want to to honor myself and what I do best mm -hmm. by doing what I do best which is working one-to-one -one with people and until they don't need me anymore <laughs> which yeah. kind of goes against all all the business advice that's out there but and, and, and okay 
So let's talk about that because I wanted to talk about that too because I feel this. I feel like you. It's like I don't want to do all that stuff. You know, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want it. <laughs> Every time I hear it, it almost is like, um, it's like when when I hear first and foremost. That's like scratching a blackboard for me. Because first and foremost mean the same thing. Yes. <laughs> foremost is first and first is foremost. And so when people say it, and it's, girl, they say it so much, it's almost like, it's mm -hmm. what I hear in my head. And it's kind of like that, like the scaling and stuff. And it's like, no, you know, how can you teach somebody to scale when they don't have anything sustainable or they don't have a consistency? That's, that needs to be there in order to scale. And then the other thing is, why do we always want to scale? Personally, I want to, I like to be in business because I want to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to do it when I want to do it. You know, I don't need any, I don't want anybody telling me how to do it. You know, and so how do you feel about, you know, all the things that are going on in our industry as far as, you know, or let me say, let me say it like this. What would you say to someone that was in this space that was trying to figure it out? And, you know, and all they can find is this, you know, everybody is talking about scaling and this and that, but they're not interested in that. They're kind of where, where we are, where, you know, we don't, we don't really want to do it that way. You don't want to work with a thousand people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Unless, you know, unless it's a group or a membership or something like that different, but, you know, people are talking about, working with a hundred people at a time. Yeah, I think, and I, I think it, it all comes back to the money mm -hmm. because the, the people who are teaching scaling are teaching that because they're teaching it to coaches and business owners and, and what have you who already have a sustainable business because they have the money to afford the coach. If you're coaching a beginner coach, they don't have money. That's just the nature of being a beginner coach. Right. Is it, you don't. So you can't, you can't charge. You can, you have to meet them where they're at. And if you're bragging about 10 K months, it's harder to do that when you're working with a baby coach because they don't have 10 K months, you know? So it, I think it's the people who are not willing to to do what matters and they're just pushing the money side of things, which is great, which we all want, but there are other ways to do the money things. If you are following what your soul is calling you to do, you're going to make the money. However you want to do it because that's what you are meant to do. Yeah. So if these coaches are suggesting something that doesn't sit right with you, that doesn't feel right with you, don't do it. I did exactly. several years ago. I, I found myself, I was like every freebie that I scrolled by on Facebook, I was signing up for <laughs> like, I was just like, and you know what I said for the next year, I'm not signing up for any freebies and the space and the clarity that that allowed me was huge yes. because I wasn't having all of these different opinions and different methods and different promises, you know, coming at me all the time and just leaving me sort of spinning and confused. And I was, I was able to actually say, listen to myself. You feel like you're like this. Yeah. Cause you got, cause you got too many voices in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So just stop. Don't listen to anybody for a you while. Take a breath. Take a breath. Um, and yeah, listen to your soul or have someone help you listen to your soul yes. who's not going to try to push anything on you, but just be the translator. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. Clear, yes. you know, whether it's Reiki, who clearing all the gunk out of your energy so that you have a better channel yourself or working with a channel, you know, like that's going to get you further than working with, um, a, a business coach who, you know, is just like cookie cutter, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think that's even more important in our business. Like I think people who aren't spiritual, that works a lot better for them if they like can follow a formula and do stuff like that. But I think people who are, who are spiritual and, and, and doing what we do, it's a lot more important to, to be aligned universally yes. Yes. You know, to, for us to be successful. I agree. Because the thing of it is, is like, you know, just like you said, we listen to our spirit and we also, you know, cause, cause I tell people, I'm like, yeah, you do need a strategy there that you have to have, I mean, you need a strategy. However, you have to also look at the energy, mm-hmm. you know, and you have to go by, go by um, what your guidance says, you know, mm-hmm. because for me, it's like certain things. I was doing the same thing as you. <laughs> I got every freebie. I know I still got some in my email and then I actually, you know, what's wild is I actually came across a couple recently in my email that I had gotten that I had forgotten about. I think I don't think I ever opened them. And then I opened them. I was like, damn, this is good. (laughs) (laughs) But I did the same thing. I was like, it's too many people in my head, too many people in my head. So I just shut it all down and I had people still coming at me. Well, can you, you want to join my program? You know, it'll help you do this and this and that and da, 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 da. And I said, no, because you know what I learned? No is a blessed word. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, you know, and and uh, let's talk a little bit about that, too, because I know that people probably come to you that really need to check boundaries. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about, you know, how you would help them with that, because so many people have that problem. I know I was one. I used to just, you know, say yes all the time and I should be saying no. Mm-hmm. And, you know, vice versa, say no when I should be saying yes, you know, that type of stuff. But how would you work with somebody with that? Because I know, because I've actually had a couple of clients and that was really all their problem was, is they had to fucking say no, <laughs> shut it down, you know, boundaries. <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah. what I would say to them, boundaries. <laughs> so well, talk and- about that a little bit, because I know you have had those kind. Boundaries is another way of saying trust yourself yes yes trust in your soul listen to your soul it all comes back to listening to your soul when you are confident in your connection with your soul yes it's easy to say yes when you want to say yes and no when you want to say no because not following your soul's guidance feels terrible and it feels worse than saying no to somebody or saying yes to somebody when you don't want to. Yeah. So it, it all comes back to the same thing for me. It's just so, connect with your soul and really nourish that connection so that you are super, super confident in it. So you know who you are and then everything's easy after that or easier anyways. That is powerful because the thing is, is you are so right. And I, I was, as I was listening to you, I was like, so basically you teach people how to connect to their soul mm-hmm. so that they can feel their own guidance, mm-hmm. you know, or, or get it on in whatever way they, they receive messages. I see that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. And that's so needful. We need that so much in this society yeah. because well, and it's you know, so easy to I mean, most of us, unless you're, unless you're one of our kids, you know, like, right. you, you don't grow up knowing that that's a thing that you need to do. Um, and we all sort of come at it and learn about it later in life. Right. Um, when really it's like a basic human skill that we should all know at the beginning, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I believe that because I, I think about it. I said, there are more people going into teaching that are more, uh, um, you know, I hate to use this word, but more woke. Mm-hmm. And so they're going into teaching and they're using, you know, their gifts and stuff to help the kids and show the kids, you know, which I've noticed. And I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that in this country, they don't teach us to do that. No. You know, they, well, they, and, they train us to work. Yeah, but there's the the whole thing, and I'm going to 
going to sound my age when I say this. But and that's okay. Parents need to teach their children. How wait, to- wait, is that a thing? <laughs> Just end of story. Parents need to teach their children, but not <laughs> academics, not like homeschooling. Right. But all of these things, and I and I see people posting on Facebook, you know, oh, kids need to learn, you know, this at school and that at school. And it's like, no, those are life skills. Right. Things you should School teach. is for academics. Life skills are to be taught at home. And somewhere that got lost, somewhere in the last couple of generations. Yep. But, you know, we need to be teaching our kids how to connect with their souls, to know who they are, to trust themselves, to have faith in, in themselves as people, um, as, as their own unique individuals who are, you know, universal beings. Yeah. And so that they, they have that knowing Yes. when they go out in the world. Yes. And there's just, there's just not, not enough of that and not the, the connection to other people. And I don't know, it, it got lost somewhere. Um, we dropped it. (laughs) We dropped it along with lots of other things, you know, Mm -hmm. that we could talk about all day, but, um, but yeah. (laughs) And it's, it's, it's like, it's definitely something that is needful because, you know, I think about that and I, I noticed that when I started doing a few sessions, because I haven't done a whole lot of one-to-one, I've done some different groups, I've had a few, you know, but when I started really getting into that, I noticed that one of the things that the people needed was that they needed to know how to connect to their body so that they can understand how they get their messages. You know, Mm -hmm. what does it feel like when you're scared? When you're feeling fear, where do you feel it? Do you feel it in your heart? Do you feel it in your your stomach, your soul place? Where do you feel it? You know, where, you know, where, how does information flow to you? Mm -hmm. You know, and this is to me that it, that was actually like the main work, regardless of anything else that they, they came for. That was really, you know, it's almost like, it's like when we listen to people and we hear them talking and they say one thing, but they really need something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, and that, that's, it's like they come to you for something, one thing, but then you pick up and you realize that what they really need is to know how to connect to their body so that they can mm-hmm. understand, you know, how to connect to their soul and how to connect and, and realize how they get their messages so that when the messages come, they know that that's what that's for them. Yeah. You know, and, and I know, I know, you know, to me, it's like, you spend the majority of the time doing that, Mm -hmm. you know, teaching them how to, to breathe and talking to them about meditation and all of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when, you know, when I was doing a lot of Reiki, people would come and they'd be like, I have this issue. And I'm like, okay, that's great information, but that's like fifth on the list. Like We have to work through like four or five other things before we get there. Right. Like that's, that's just what you're noticing. Cause that's what's screaming the loudest, but it's right. actually being caused by all these of these other things. things. So yeah. be patient. We'll get there, but we have to clear out all of this other stuff first. As being that, yeah. So I love this work and I have been loving this conversation. But um, we are going to land the plane. <laughs> okay. Okay. But okay, so fine. amazing, right? <laughs> so let the people know, you know, where they can connect with you. And if you have anything going on, like any specials or anything you want to invite people to, you can share that as well. And all of her information and details will also be in the show notes. So you can click on those and make sure that you can connect with Janet, because I'm sure that after listening to her and what it is that she does and her awesome work that you're going to want to connect with her. So Janet, share with the people, you know, a little bit about where they can connect with you or the best places to connect with you. And then yeah. I want you to answer this one question. If there was one thing in the world that you would like to see changed, what would, what would that be? Oh Lord. Okay. I'm going to stick that in the back of my head for a second. <laughs> um, I 
am on Instagram as Janet Sandberg dot intuitive, uh, Facebook. Uh, I have a personal profile at Janet Sandberg and I have a Facebook page at Janet Sandberg intuitive. Um, I have a TikTok, but I haven't done anything on TikTok for a really long time. So don't expect much happening over there, but you know, may, you know, you never know. You never it's, know. I was going to say it's time girl. TikTok is I know. kicking off. It's good. Yeah. yeah. And, um, my podcast is called Phoenix Wisdom. Yes, very uh, nice. And I have, so you can find that on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, also on Instagram at phoenix.wisdom.podcast. Um, and my website, janetsandberg.com. Sandberg being spelled S-A-N-D-B-E-R-G because that people get that wrong all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What was the question? What's one thing I would like to change about the world? Yes. I, this is my answer in the moment. If you ask me another day at another moment, it would probably be different. Mm -hmm. I would like parents to connect with their children when they're small. Mm. Um, I'm really glad that I had my kids before um, we had portable cellular devices, mm -hmm. um, where you had to pay attention to them, but it just, it makes me really sad when I see babies in strollers holding cell phones and, um, iPads and, and whatever, like your kids are only little and, and, you know, this is the old lady, me talking again, your kids are only little for such a short time. And yes. I know it feels like forever when you're in it, Yes, but it's, but it's precious not, it, it and it, it and it's not just about like well you do it once or you you do it you know this one time which is fine but we're talking about a person you know babies are are people and you want them to vet, to develop into wonderful loving spiritual human people and that starts when they're little so you have to you have to make those connections with them Love that. Love it. That was different than anyone else. <laughs> but I expect that. And you're right. It's one of those things that is fluid. It's just like uh, blood pressure and uh, and auras. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's just not the same always. But uh, this has been so amazing. And I love, I loved actually your answer to that question. That was amazing. Because that's something that is so necessary. And so just like you said, we, we've lost that. Mm -hmm. along the way you know and you're right the devices because my kids were born at that time too and I loved that I loved the fact that I would take them outside and let them run around and you know I used to take them all to the park and stuff a lot because I felt like they needed to exercise mm -hmm. they needed to be out in the nature you know yeah and not sitting up in the house you know and I, I just you know and now it's, it's sad because you know kids don't even know how to play outside yeah. Well, and kids no. don't know how to be bored. No. You have to be bored because that's what sparks the imagination. Yeah. So um, funny story about that one. <laughs> kids would say, mommy, I'm bored. And I would say, no, I don't think you are. And they would say, but yeah, we are. We're bored. I said, okay. All right. Well, come on. Let me show you something. And so I would have them scrubbing the baseboards and uh -huh. I would have them cleaning. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. My kids learn early. Don't tell me you're bored because I'll give you something to do. Yeah. We, we don't need you bored. You know, it's you not going to be something you want bored. to do. Right. I was like, <laughs> there's many things to do. So they would do that. And, and you know, what's funny is uh, one of the friends came over one day and he was saying he was in the house and I just happened to like hear them talking in the bedroom. And he said something about, man, you know, I'm bored. And both of my kids looked at him and said, Shh, don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. He said, Why? Let mom here. Because my mom would go find us something too. <laughs> he said, Oh, okay. <laughs> no, there's always something to do. The walls need washing, the baseboards need cleaning yeah. up. You know, the floor needs mopping, vacuuming. I mean, the bathroom can be clean. There's always shit to do. Yeah. Well, and even even driving around in the car, it's good for kids to just look out the window and watch the world go by. You know? No, they, they can't do that because they're doing too busy doing this. As soon as they get in the car, that's that's what they're doing, and you're like the world. Okay. 
Yeah. So my that, grandchildren that, are, our, our grandchildren are going to hate us. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, but it's okay because we'll, okay. it'll be a blessing for them. <laughs> it will be. They just won't know it till they're grown up. Right. <laughs> They'll look back and be like, grandma was right. <laughs> Yeah, we were. <laughs> but all right. So we're going to get off this live. I really appreciate you, Janet, for showing up. This has been amazing. This this conversation is one for the books. So make sure that, you know, wherever you are, that you like, share, and subscribe. If you are watching it, you know, I love it. Um, You can comment below. If you're wherever you're listening to it, you can also comment and message me. And if you are a spiritual entrepreneur, you can also come on Straight Out of Savannah and talk about it. So again, thank you for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. Bye now.